Okay, so here we are back at the dump. Yeah. Um, just to have another look. We've, we've looked at it quite often. Yeah, we've come here quite often. We've so. gone over and over the old <laughs> bit quite a lot, but um, we might go and look at some of the, uh, the later stuff. Yeah, because it's a massive dump and there's lots of later rubbish behind us over that way. So um, yeah, let's have a look, see if you can find anything. and loads of crockery down here. First found this dish and then I found these two plates which I love because they have got ferns on them and I love ferns. Look, they're two serving dishes. It says dishwasher, detergent and microwave proof so they're not all that old but I really like them. They're beautiful, got ferns on them. I think there's some... Yeah, mum just said, oh no, just kicked it. Mum just said she thinks she had some like this in the 70s or 80s. But I really like it because I really like ferns. So I'm gonna take that. I'm gonna take both of them. Well, I can see a bottle sticking out here. It's one of my favorites these little green, yes, it looks whole. These little green burst lip bottles are absolutely lovely. So I'm gonna keep it. Is this a bead? I don't know. I think it might have been a bead that's been melted. Yeah, I think that's what it is. And there's something here that looks like the bottom of a glass, but it's... Oh, yeah, that's pretty melted as well. So it turns out, unfortunately, there's lots of recent rubbish here. Um, but I'm absolutely chuffed with my plates. I found a third one, by the way. I think there's probably more underneath here. But I also found some older rubbish. So I found this incredibly, incredibly bubbly glass. It's beautiful. Look at all the bubbles. And then down here, look, I've got an ink. Oh, well, it could have had ink or it could have had a number of other things in it as well. But it's a bit chipped up, a bit too chipped up to take. And a piece of broken cod, cod bottle. So. There's definitely all the stuff here, that's cool. Such a pretty lid here, it would have been beautiful. Looks like it might have been a, a teapot lid. But small bits in here, I wonder if it's of the same thing. Oh yes, look, Oh. The whole lid is in here. I don't know. It's worth taking it. I'll think about it. Is this a whole bottle? Oh yeah. Oh, it's running away. Look at that. That's full of green stuff. Ew. Hmm. Should I take it? I don't think, you know, when bottles are full of stuff, you don't know what it is. It could be poison or anything. So it's a bit dodgy. 
so not sure about that. Think about it. So I found something here and it looks whole. And it is. <laughs> it's a whole glass dish, look. How funny. Oh wow, is that like purple Pyrex? Because that's really collectible. Is it? It might be purple Pyrex. It hasn't got um Oh it's beautiful. I really like that. Yeah, it's unusual. Fancy finding it whole just lying there. I think it's quite lovely. Yeah. I like it's it. It's kind of smoky. Yeah. It's kind of a purpley kind of tinge. And to it'll it. be nice to put things in. Yeah, exactly. Sea glass, put yeah. finds in, yeah. Sea glass and marbles and things. Yeah. Fantastic. Oh my goodness. This is treasure to me. It's a sheet of copper. Wow. I can make things with that. I love it. I think I found another miniature whiskey bottle. This one's quite small. <laughs> yep. But it's cute. Copper wire. No one else would look twice at it, except maybe Tom Burley. <laughs> but I love it. I'm taking it. I think I found a bead. Yes, it is a bead. Oh, that's cute. Beautiful green. Oh, that's really pretty. I know. Oh, it's like green and clear. Uh -huh. Oh, I like that. Fantastic. Yeah. Okay, so I found this. I think it might be a pants pot. It's come out of some kind of writing set. And I also found this little mini jar, which will be perfect for decorating. There's a little mini sauce bottle there. And there's lots of bits of marmalade jar. But behind me down here, there is this huge dip in the ground. And it looks like, to me, down there, amongst the modern rubbish, a ginger beer bottle. It looks cracked. But mum's there, she's going to see if it's whole. Or at least if it's mostly whole. Can you see it? Yeah. It's got a hole in it. Oh. It is a ginger beer bottle, but it's all chipped and it's got a hole in it, Mum says. Well, there might be more down there if there's that one. I think it might have down the bank. Yeah, yeah, it might have it fallen down here because this is a very steep bank. Might have come out of this bank side. Cool. Well, we should look for some more. Unfortunately, it's a bit knackered. Yeah. It's seen Bernard Day, it's got a hole in it and it's all chipped and cracked. But that would have been absolutely beautiful had it been whole. It looks like it's tumbled down from up here and it's been smashed on the rocks. What a shame. Yeah, 
Robertson Ballantyre and it's a funny oval leaf shape so that's cool. I can see something peeping out here. What's this? Oh, oh no, it's broken. It was a little pepper pot. Foreign. What a shame, it's broken. Oh no. So we just come across a bit of a fresh spot here and first finds is quite an old lock I'm not sure how old that is but it, it almost looks Victorian and mum found this old vial she's also found something over here what have you got I pulled a handle and it had a jug on the end of it but it's broken look it would have been whole oh. that's got a root sticking in it so I've just found this and it says not to be taken but you might notice that it's actually amber and we have never found an amber poison bottle so that would just be amazing to find something like that complete but there's loads of other bottles here loads of them I think they're 1930s that looks like piece of a gymongous oil lamp. That's huge. Wow. So here's a little um, medicine bottle. It's got that um, protruding lip so that the top could be sealed and tied around the top. So that's quite cute. Wow, look at this. It's an iron. Oh Look at that. Wow. That's impressive and it's heavy. Wow. Doing the ironing must have been a workout back in the day. It literally is a chunk of iron. Whoa. That would have been whole. It's probably broken in the frost or something. What a shame. Loads of vintage bottles here. Just found this lovely milk of magnesia bottle with embossing on it. There's quite a few flasks. <laughs> Foot warmer. This looks like a spoon. And it is. A really old copper spoon. I never find these whole. This is the most complete one I've found today. Plant pot, but it's just, it's knackered. Oh, I thought that was a small plate, but it's connected to something. I saw something over here, it's unusual. It's tin. Oh, I think it might have had a tobacco, like a tobacco, a cigar in it. I think it might be a cigar case. Oh yes, I think it is because I can see the word smoking. Oh, that's unusual. I've not found anything like that before. What's this here? Piece of plate. That I don't recognise the pattern. Okay, so we're just on our way back to the car and Alex found this cute <laughs> little bottle. bottle. It's cute, isn't it? Still got yeah. the big light lid on it. It is, it's really sweet. We're still on our way back to the car and look what Alex spotted. Is it another one of those bottles? Not the behold, is it? Is it? Behold, behold. Oh my goodness, it is. It is. <laughs> oh, wow. I think these are pretty rare because we've never seen anyone else <gasps> find one or we've never seen one online. JR and Co. Oh. And it's in perfect condition just like the other one. That's four we found. Two a hole. Two have been whole. Isn't that brilliant? I know. <laughs> I love them. I think they're beautiful. Oh, look what Mum just scraped out. 
It's a tiny cup. It's a mini cup. Oh, wow. A teeny oh, look, cup. I've just seen something up there as well. What? Verdigree. Look. Oh, oh verdigree. It's a coin. Is it? A coin. Oh, wonderful. It's, coin. it's quite bent as well, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, treasures. actually went to a much younger part of the dump and in this still, trip. Yeah, still found some interesting things though. Yeah, it was quite surprising. Um, featuring this lovely 1980s dinner <laughs> service. <laughs> and I actually remember my mother having um, this dinner service back in the 80s. I actually really like funny. it. I really like, we actually got three plates. Yeah, one although, has um, a chip in it. Yeah, has, it's a only small, small so we can kind of get away with that. But we are actually definitely going to use these. <laughs> going to put them in the cupboard and maybe we'll have our Christmas dinner on it. A blast from the past. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I like ferns. So we're, we're going to use those. We'll definitely use them, actually. Yeah, they're but, pretty good. And we've got another thing we can use here this beautiful dish which is like pyrex and it's quite like purpley. purpley kind of yeah strange like lilac color but it's very beautiful it is the it's color lovely. and it's it's beautiful and simple and there's no chips or cracks or anything so probably from around the 70s or 80s as well yeah but we can put that in the window and maybe put some marbles in it yeah, or something yeah. some sea glass new sea glass dish um moving on to metal finds and some of them have actually come up really nicely with a little bit of elbow grease. And we love finding metal because we love making things out of metal. So yeah, of all course. these nondescript pieces will become something interesting. Yeah, for example, this wire. I mean, it doesn't look like much right now, right here, but that could be turned into all kinds of jewellery, yeah, couldn't it? Yeah, it could. Even that a copper bracelet. Wire. It's so pretty. Rings, bracelet, you name it, that could be turned into it. So all of this is great for and that. And we have this huge sheet of copper that I found, which is marvellous. I'm so happy to I find know. things like this because I can make amazing things There's from this. There's endless things to be I made from that. leaves or Christmas decorations or... But well, look. Look at that, yeah. That's I have... Like I, I cleaned a small section of it while I was cleaning the other metal, and look at the difference between yeah. the verdigris. Because remember, copper non-ferrous metals don't rust; they tarnish. And this green stuff is known as verdigris. I like both, actually. But yeah, they're both nice textures, aren't they? Both lovely colours, and of course, as soon as you take a torch to this to make something out of it, the verdigris burns off. Yeah, unfortunately. So it's difficult to retain it. But that's that's really beautiful. The, it is, and I like the, the um, like pattern. Yeah, that it's kind of been etched like by etched pattern, the yeah. weathering on it. It's anyway, <laughs> that's really cool and more useful things to make things with. Um, and then we've got two coins down here. So this one is a big old penny. I'm not sure what the date is on it. Actually, I haven't actually looked at it. Let's have a look. Something sixty. I think it might be 1916. Yeah, yeah I think it is 1916 so that is um, seventh on there no no Edward the seventh son who's that George the fifth George the George the fifth fifth I think yes anyway sure. it's one of those it's one of those blokes <laughs> but the more interesting coin is this one now this is a bit of an unexpected find it was like our last find of the day yeah and it's a 10 centime and it dates from the 1850s yeah, how so, And that's Napoleon the Third on there, although you can only see a tiny fragment of his hair. 
Yeah. Um, but there are some, there's a little bit of lettering. You can see, look, um, see the head of, of an eagle, look. There, yeah, the head of an, an eagle. Wing. So yeah, a tense on team and um, how it got to be on a little rubbish tip in Scotland, we do Who not Who knows? Know. Who knows? And it's strange, it looks like it's been hit by something, doesn't it? Yeah. And you know, we've actually found some other um, sort of European coins, different European coins. So we found some German coins on that dump, haven't we? Yes, and we found also um, a Canadian First World War hat badge and there was a prisoner of war camp and training camp near to where we found these things back in the late 19th century that went on into the end of the First World War. So, so we're wondering yeah. if we could, could have a connection. Could with this be involved? Could it have been involved in some someone, kind of conflict? Yeah, someone had on the front line? Back. Yeah, yeah, because obviously they fought in France, didn't they? So yeah. That might have more interesting story than we realise, but of course it can't speak, so we we'll can only... never know. We can only surmise. Yeah. And let our imaginations run away with us. But I'm not gonna lie, doesn't it look like it's kinda of been hit by a bullet? <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know we've said this before, but you know I know. <laughs> but yeah, that's our imaginations for you. Okay, and a little bit more ordinary, we've got a pounce pot, which would have had I think it was what was it? Crushed bone. Um no, yeah. Um, cuttlefish? Cuttlefish. Cuttlefish, bone. yeah, that's what it is. I keep thinking it's There's sand. Bits but... of stuff falling out. Oh, yeah. Bits of... <laughs> <laughs> but that's what. I don't think this would have actually been used. I think it would have been part of some kind of decorative set. A decorative set of three, probably, with an inkwell, a pounce pot, and something else. Yeah, maybe something else. Yeah. <laughs> or a set of two. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, what they would have done way back in the day is after they've written something in ink they'd sprinkle this on top of it to soak up the remaining ink and to dry it yeah so all the pine needles are falling out look <laughs> oh no um we've got some bakelite items here actually which are interesting we might be able to use some of these because doesn't that look like a bell yes it does i thought it was at first but it's um the cover for a light pole but that could be a little tree decoration or a hat. A base for something. Oh, look, it looks like a hat. Yeah, it looks like a bowl of hats. And then we've got a collection of, of wee finds in the middle here. And we've got a lovely little toy teacup. That's very cute. We love finding things like this, as you know by now. And we've got beads. One of them is horribly melted. Yeah, this one's knackered. I, I don't think... Yeah, that's not, yeah. Very, not very nice. It's anymore. been through the wars. Um, but this one is my favourite one. Oh, yeah, that's this lovely like faceted green and clear one it's very vintage looking isn't it it is it's very like what 1950s maybe i'm not sure but i like that i think that's cool and we've got a few two other beads a white one and a tiny little blue one a collar stud a button um another button and then this oh <laughs> yeah. i'm sorry but i am the one this time guilty of finding a tooth <laughs> and I, I i think it's horrible but you know you just can't help but pick it up it's a piece of history <laughs> but you know, look at um, the cavity i know oh. look the thing is look around look at this at the bottom oh, here no wonder it was pulled out uh, like under the gum it was all rotten <sighs> look uh, and then you can actually see on the top there the filling it's actually been filled at some point it's, it's gone green so I wonder what they use I know what did they use for fillings back then that's that gross absolutely nasty isn't it we've got quite the tooth collection we've got about five human teeth by now you found one last time but we haven't shown yes, that video yes I found yet. one recently guys but this one time was this time's at the molar so um, yeah that was fun um, <laughs> yeah we've got about four of them I think Lovely. So we've got <laughs> three vulcanite bottle stops. I think um, that one's plastic, actually. Yeah, this one, I don't know. It's quite a late one. Yeah, because they were used right, vulcanite stoppers were used right into the 1970s. Yeah. So yeah. Um, it says Robertson or Ballantyre. No, that says Blan. Oh. Blantyre. Oh, right. I read it wrong. Blantyre. Yeah. I'm not sure where Blantyre is or no. whether it's a name. Um, but we've never found this before and it's a strange shape like an yeah. oval shape so that's an interesting little find and then moving on to our bottles because we've got a, a bit of a range in dates actually 
Um, this one is not very old, but we seem to have got a bit of a collection of these, haven't yeah, we? Yeah, miniature um, spirit bottles of some sort. Yeah, we've got a collection of them. So but it's a lovely know, colour, isn't it? It is. I think they're quite cute. They are cute. I know some of the people find them hideous, but you know. And this is a fairly <laughs> modern like. Horlix, but it is embossed. So yeah, it's vintage and it's quite cute, isn't it? It is quite cute. I like that. Even it's, though it's a screw, screw top. top. People shy away from screw tops, but you know, they're all part of history. They are. And screw tops are much older than you think, remember? They were using them in the mid 1800s. So don't yeah. remember, don't forget that. I was going to say don't remember that. <laughs> <laughs> this one we have found one of these before and we we've have. done a little bit of the history of it before. So we'll put a link below to the video oops i just poured water out of it we'll put a link below to the video where we talk about this the um, maker maker and the producer of the contents yeah so it says edinburgh and it says what's it say it says no glasgow, glasgow and glasgow. it's govancroft so this was a huge pottery mm. in on the central belt of scotland there were yeah. lots of big potteries on the west and in the east um, in Scotland back in the day so and it's really unusual we've not seen one like this anywhere else have we? No apart from the ones that we've found so we're thinking they're quite rare and were just made over a short period of time yeah and we've only ever found them in the Scottish borders yeah and so yeah we have found a third one but that's in a different video and a different trip yeah and um, we've got some burst lips which are a little bit older than some of the other things we've found and they're a beautiful colour um, I love you know, that one. That one's nice. <laughs> it's got all its bubbles in. Gorgeous. Beautiful Very kind thick of aqua. at the bottom. Yeah. It would have been hand blown into a mould, so that's beautiful. And then there's this cutie. This is a little sauce bottle. And it's Yorkshire relish, and we have done something about this before. Good old and well. back house. We've done a history on them that yeah. a long time ago. We'll try and find that video and put the link down below as well. But this is like a little mini sample bottle, yeah, so that's so quite cute. cute. Yeah. So that's a nice little find. We've got a little bottle here. That doesn't go with it, that bake light lid. Alex found a bottle with a lid, but um, it's been misplaced it because has. she put it in her pocket. I know, so. so it's somewhere that we don't know. Obviously, it's yeah. somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so there's a bit of information Mum actually has about this bottle because it has something on the bottom. Yes, what it says it? Dreen on the bottom, and I found out that Dreen was shampoo. And it was first introduced by Procter and Gamble of Cincinnati in Ohio in America mm. in the mid 1930s. Um, and we think this bottle dates from the early to mid 1950s. So it's very small, isn't it? Yeah. You only have to wash your hair once. Shampoo. Maybe it was in a hotel or something. Yeah, because that wouldn't go very far on my no. hair, that's no. for sure. <laughs> like maybe the whole contents if in one hair wash. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is a wonderful find oh, but it's a shit well, yeah we think this is from some kind of heat damage so it's been caught up in a fire or something and it's just pinged off all the glaze yeah. on the outside but we're going to have a go at restoring it oh yes definitely <laughs> we can't not because it's almost all there it's just needs a bit of work a bit of filling in you know and it probably dates from the late 19th early 20th century um, because that's when this Thomas Scheel was in business. Um, yeah, and his brother was also in a similar business and his father before him. So that's really cool, really cool little bit of local history that we are definitely going to restore. We might yeah. do something a bit funky with the restoration, but we'll have to see about yeah. that. Anyway, on that note, we're going to say goodbye and thank you. Thank you so much for watching, liking the video and commenting. And of course, thank you to everyone who subscribes and also donates to our channel in any way and our wonderful patrons who give us give to us every month and help keep our channel going you're all wonderful so thank you so much hope you're all having a wonderful seasonal time of the year <laughs> <laughs> a lovely midwinter hope you're all keeping cozy or keeping cool if you're south of the equator yes. and um we'll see you again next week bye, bye.